in my last video I promised a video on what I learned from Craig Adams while hiking with him for a week regarding gear, settings, and even a bit of editing. So I had these grand ideas of creating this amazing how-to video and walking you through all of Craig Adams' camera gear and settings, and when I sat down to really start fleshing out my plan, I thought to myself, what the heck am I doing? Craig has always done a really good job of going over his current gear in numerous videos, and he does a great job of keeping his website up to date with his latest gear. I was with him while he was editing his Kilimanjaro hike and picked up what I thought were a few neat tips, but realized that he covered a lot of this in his behind the scene videos in the past. So why be redundant? As my video got shorter and shorter, I figured I would just modify this video to cover what I thought were some of the more interesting tips I picked up from him. And if you haven't noticed, Craig's been on a tear getting videos out really fast lately. In his latest everything you need to know about his Nepal hike video, a lot of the stuff he covered. So a lot of stuff may be redundant, but I'm gonna get it out anyways. So first thing I'm gonna go over is basic camera settings. They're straightforward and to the point, but they're good to just know exactly how he's got his camera set up. 4K, 100 megabits per second, 24 frames per second. Everything's shot in that right now. Now, as far as picture profile goes, everything's just shot in default picture profile. So even though Craig has a super wide lens, 16 to 35, he does say that most of his shots end up being around 35 millimeter. He also just said in his last video that most of his shots are in f5.6 to f8 because it seems to be the sharpest overall. I saw it set at 100 to get the highest image quality, but it can get boosted up in order to get the proper exposure. So there was a time when some things were shot in auto, but now at this point, Craig is shooting everything in full manual mode. Now he does change his Kelvin for his white balance to about 5600K during his daytime shots, and morning and night he does auto white balance because of a little bit of a magenta hue. He does set his button on the side of his lens, which is usually focus lock to zebras to turn it on or turn it off. Now, as far as the tips, and these are the kind of things I picked up from him on the way he was actually shooting, he tends to underexpose his shots up to about maybe a stop or so. He never wears sunglasses when actually shooting his videos. Why? Well, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, but again, stupid me, I'm out in the sun, I'm keeping my sunglasses on, and then I wonder why everything tends to be overexposed. It's because, well, everything looks darker if you got your sunglasses on. Well, duh, yeah, makes a lot of sense. But somehow I'm slow and I didn't put all that together and tended to overexpose over and over and over again. The other big thing for him is he does not use an ND filter. He did just talk about that again. So the 180 degree shutter rule that everybody else says, hey, it's the way to make things look more cinematic. Well, I think Craig's doing just fine making his stuff look cinematic without the ND filter and without the shutter rule. Now, while we were walking on, you could tell that Craig was very intentional in framing and picking out his shots. So he'd always check his framing in hand before he actually popped it onto a tripod. So he'd check it, make sure everything looked good, that he thought it was gonna expose properly. Then he'd pull out the tripod, set it up, and get things going. Now, that being said, Craig did not shoot a ton. If the lighting wasn't great, if the exposure wasn't great, if it wasn't something of interest, the camera just stayed away. And there would be hours on end where no shots were being taken. And I think it's important because a lot of time we get out there, especially for me, and I just shoot everything and then I end up, you know, throwing it. Well, first of all, it's a ton of footage to go through, which is a pain in the neck. But then on top of that, I end up throwing a ton of it out or it just never gets used. Or, you know, when I'm watching it, I don't even watch all of it because it's just too much to freaking watch. And Craig, who's very intentional with his shots, not just shooting everything that's out there, making sure that the framing and composition and, and exposure is right, ends up using about 95% of his shots, which of course just blew me away because I would love to say I use 95% of my shots, but that's just not even close to true. So it does make me think I gotta be a lot more intentional with my shots, take a little bit more time doing the composition, and definitely spend more time making sure the exposure is properly. I seem to have a really, really big problem with exposing properly lately. I'm not quite sure why. When he does put it on his tripod and starts recording, he steps away, gives it at least 10 seconds. That gives you plenty of time for the ins and outs and there's no shake or anything else. And it also gives him enough time with the audio so that way the audio can kind of carry him from one shot to the next. The other thing I've noticed, and I'm sure you have as well, is that he's starting to focus a lot more on the sound. He will actually just set up the camera. Maybe it's not an interesting shot, just to record the sound and let it just sit there for a minute or so. And that may be used as a background over a handful of shots and just kind of tie everything together. 
So this is another big thing that I just, I guess I just never really paid attention to. But in almost all of his shots, he's walking away from his camera. He doesn't, or I shouldn't say he doesn't, but he very, very, very rarely actually walks towards the camera in his shots. And there are some profile shots as well. But almost in every single shot, he is walking away, moving forward, moving the story forward, et cetera, et cetera. And this is the last one. Craig loves to have the subject backlit. So keep that in mind. If you're inspired by Craig and you like the way he shoots and you like the look that he has, realize that a lot of the time, his subject is backlit if he can do it. So now let's get to the drone because he didn't really cover this too much in this last video on exactly what the settings are. So everything's in full auto. He's not doing manual anything, no strange picture profile, nothing, just auto. I think we all agree that Craig's drone game is on point and the fact that everything is shot fully auto is pretty darn impressive. So he will use the auto exposure lock button that way, it's not constantly shifting in the video as you're moving from darker to lighter areas. So that's the only thing he really does other than just good composition, good shots and get it done. Now, as far as tips for shooting with the drone, the wider, the better, as long as you can still see the subject. So Craig would back it up as far as he can or go as high as he can. As long as you see that little dot moving on your phone screen, it's going to look great when it actually gets blown up onto a laptop or a lot of people watching on a TV, you're really gonna be able to see your subject moving around. Now, because he only goes with three batteries on these hikes, he really needs to make sure that he plans all the shots out before he gets the drone up in the air. So he will kind of visualize what he's planning on getting before he gets in the air. That doesn't mean he doesn't do a little bit of hunting and searching once up there, but he usually has a pretty general idea of what he's going to be shooting in the very short time period he has up in the air get it up there as fast as possible and then bring it down as quick as possible and move on to the next spot. Now Craig constantly puts his drone into tripod mode, which gives it that very nice smooth movement through whatever environment it's in. I think far too often, too many people have the drone moving a little bit too quick. So again, I really like these slow movements. And again, that's using tripod mode, which is a little switch on the side of the DJI controller. It's definitely something I'm going to start using a lot more often than I am right now. And also when you are shooting a subject, and that subject usually is being Craig when he's shooting his videos, he does try to pick up the pace a little bit. So he's walking a little bit quicker than he normally does. It just, the way the scale works with just, you know, having that, that camera so far back, you, you need to pick up the pace a little bit so that the movement looks a little bit more natural and you cover a little bit more ground. I hope this video was helpful for you. I know I had a lot of questions that were answered when I was with Craig. A lot of it I was really surprised on. It just goes to show that with intentional shots, being thoughtful about what you're shooting, exposing properly goes a really, really long way. And of course the story, we always hear this over and over again, the story is really, really important. It doesn't hurt to have a couple dogs show up too, right? Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And also let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions that I didn't answer for you. Till next time, later.